Hey there, chemistry team. This is kind of a part two video, um, you know, kind of an extension from our making graphs video. Essentially, what we're doing is we're answering the question, hey, if we got some data, like I showed last time, the, the temp density uh, dependency on temperature, and you have this data table, right? And you've got, say, in lab, a temperature in between the lines on the data table. You're like, what if, it, what if the temperature is 18.7 degrees Celsius or 21.4 degrees Celsius? It's not on the data table, and you can't guess in chemistry. So there's really two ways to extract that data. One, make a graph, right? Do a plot the data and do a least squares fit, add a trend line and get your y equals mx plus b. We showed that in the making graphs video. That's the best way to do it, um, but that can take a while if you're not adept at plotting data. Um, but if you practice it enough, woo, you can whip that out pretty fast. Just plot the information. You know, I'm, I'm a horrible typer, but I can still do it pretty fast. I'm not like, you know, one of my, my uh, out of my three, I have four kids, you know, three daughters, my oldest daughter, she can type up to 160 words per minute with almost no errors. I watched her. I did videos. She's like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, going, I'm like this. This is how I type. Toink, toink. Toink. Oh, man. Oh, God. I meant to hit I and I hit you. Oh, delete backspace. Toink, toink, toink. <laughs> this is like a... <laughs> Fastest two fingers in the West. So anyway, I get a lot of red underlined garbage when I'm you know, texting. I always get the wrong words. Ah, whatever it is. It's okay. We ultimately get there. Some of us just a little more slower <laughs> than others, but we get there. But the better you get at it, the faster you can do it. But if you don't have a, a computer on you or a way to plot the data, we can do the shortcut to making a graph, which is called linear interpolation. But if you're good at making graphs, this isn't really a shortcut. It can actually take longer than making the dumb graph and doing the y equals mx plus b, getting that y equals mx plus b equation. All right. Uh, so let's do linear interpolation. And again, it's just a mathematical way to extract information from a data table if the value is in between those given. Because if you have a temperature of 20.0 degrees Celsius, just take that number. You don't have to figure anything out. It's on there, right? But if you're in between, how do I get that without making a graph? If the data has a linear quantitative relationship to it, right? If those two parameters, in this case, this was density and temperature, density and temperature, if they're linear, if you get a, if you can see that the data is linear, we can do kind of a little shortcut ratio trick, a mathematical ratio trick, to derive an equation that relates uh, density to temperature. And then we can just plug in the value for the temperature and calculate the density that falls in between, like at a 22.6 degrees Celsius or something. You can kind of eyeball it, though, right? You can see right here, you know, if I'm at, you know, 18.5, Right, it's going to be you know less than 0 0.997506, but greater than 0 0.9973. So you can see it's going to be in between the two. So if you get a value that's you know below 0 0.9973 or above 0 0.9975, something went wrong. You can you can get a rough idea out to probably four decimal places, maybe even five if you're on top of it, of what that value roughly should be. But let's actually calculate it. So what I'll do, let's just pick a temperature. Let's say we have something like uh, 21.7 degrees Celsius, right? I haven't done this ahead of So let's say we have 21.7 degrees Celsius. We're like, well, it's in between these. Uh, what I'll do is I'll write 21.0 and 22.0 up on the board um, and show you how we can actually uh, derive an equation to solve for our temperature at 21.7. I'm going to forget that, so I'm going to write that over here. So let's say we do that. Um, so I'll put the data on the board and we'll solve for 21.7. I'll show you how to do it. Be right back. All right, let's say we have a, you know, a lab where we measure, uh, we got some pure water, we measure the temperature at 21.7 degrees Celsius with our thermometer. And we need to know the density. Say we're going to convert the uh, volume to a mass, right? We want to get an accurate mass or mass to volume, get a more accurate volume rather than measuring in a graduate cylinder. We measure the mass of the water use the density to convert it to a, um, a volume, but we need to know the density, which means we need to know the temperature. So let's say it's 21.7. So what I did is I took, I don't need the whole data table, I just need the, the one, if I'm 21.7, I'm gonna pick 21.0 and 22.0, right before and after. So there's the 0 0.99690 and the 0 0.99671. So let's say these are good to four significant digits so we can track uncertainty. How are we going to set this up? 
We need to label these. Now remember, this is our x. If we plotted this, this would be our x data. This would be our y data. If you watch that uh, graph video, the one, the parameter you control, the independent variable goes on the x-axis. So we would control the temperature, and the density would change accordingly. So the density is dependent on the temperature. The, so the density is the dependent variable, which always goes on the y-axis. So let's call this the x data, call this the y data. Let's label these. All right. Now, depending how you label them, you'll get a different equation. So for my class, let's stay consistent. Let's all do the same way. Let's say this is our x data. So this would be, call it, let's call that x1 and y1. Let's call the data from the data table um, the x1s and the x uh, three uh, x1s and x2s and the y1s and y2s, right? Because that's the original data. So I'm going to call the 21 x1 and the 22 x2. Okay, so I'm going to call this x2, and I'm going to call this y2. So those are the ones from the data table. We, but if I went x1, x2, then you'd get a different equation. It would still work, but you'd get different equation. So let's call this x3. I'll do that in green. So this would then be y3. And we want to solve for y3. See how that works out? Now, since this is linear, we can do a ratio method. We can say that, now do you see this is the whole range, correct? And this is part of it. So let's do this. Let's take this, uh, let's take this color here. Let's call this entire thing the whole of the X range. Everybody okay with that? Let's take this entire thing and call that the whole of the Y range. From 21 to 22, 0.9 to 0.9 to 0.9 We good? Which would mean that if we take just this section or this section, that would be part of the whole, correct? So let's just take the top two. Let's, well, that's pretty ugly. Let's call that the part of X and the part of Y. I'll put the Y below because otherwise it would look like party. If I put it up here, party. Party and holy. So this would be the part of X. This would be the whole of X. This would be the part of Y. That would be the whole of Y. So we can set up the ratio where the part of X over the whole of the x range should equal the part of y, not part t, over the whole of y. Do you see that? This is only if it's linear. Right? We'll do one example. I could stop it after this. I'll derive an equation for you, but let's go ahead and solve it for 21.7 so you can see how to track the uncertainty. We'll just make this video a little bit longer, but I like the videos typically between 20 and 30 minutes. That's, uh, I want to, you know, less would be better, um, you know, because obviously I, I, I can go about five, 10 minutes before I lose focus, but oh, yeah, this is important information. You got to know how to do things properly. So I'm going to take, I'm going to do my problem step by step so you can see how I think in the process, how I track uncertainty, how I track units, and how I track the numerical values. Well, let's take a look here. What would the part of X be? Well, the part of X would be this. So it would be this number minus that number, X3 minus X1. That would be based on my definition. So if you did this x1, x2, x3, that would be different. See that? So try to follow my format. It would be easier for me to check in class. Um, now, what will the whole of x be? Well, it would be x2 minus x1. Right? Not too hard. We're deriving stuff. Let's go over to the y side. What would be the part of y? Well, it would be this minus this. So that would be y3 minus y1. Do you see the parallel with the x here? Now the whole range of y would be y2 minus y1. There's your linear interpolation equation. So what we have in here, we know these, we know these, except y3. 
If we know everything else, we can solve for y3. It's going to be a little tedious. See all the subtractions, addition. you got subtractions. You've got divisions, multiplications. So we're going to have to do this in several steps to track the uncertainty properly. But it's just basic math, just solving for that, that variable, y3. So let's do it. If you want to jump ahead, solve it for 21.7 degrees Celsius. So you would just plug in x3 here, which would be 21.7. Plug in x1, 21.0 right there. Plug in x2, 22.0 degrees Celsius, and x1 would be 21.0 degrees Celsius. Do those subtractions, track the uncertainty, um, you know, track the units, include your units. Over here, we don't know what y3 is, so just leave it as y3, minus y1, which is 0.996690, y2 is 0.99671, and y1 is 0.99690. Now, what should it be roughly if we eyeball it? Well, it's got to be less than 0.9969, and greater than 0.99671. So if you get a value less than 0.99671 or a value greater than 0.9969, you probably screwed up, maybe put something in the wrong spot, forgot a negative sign somewhere. Um, but 21.7 is, so halfway would be about 0.996805-ish, somewhere in that range. But it's going to be closer to 21. 21.7 is closer to 22. So it's going to be closer to 0.9967. Um, so it would be a little bit less than 0.9968, probably a 0.99677, somewhere in that range. You can kind of eyeball it. Um, let's see what we get. I got cat hair in my eyeball. Ah! Okay, go ahead and solve it for 21.7. Let me get this cat hair out of my eye, and then we'll walk through this math together. We can do this! Here we go, team! We can do this, we can do this, we can do this! So I rewrote the data table up there with our labels. And I rewrote the equation that we solved or derived from that, right? So the part of x over the whole of x is equal to the part of y over the whole of y. Party over holy. So all I did is plugged in my data. So x3 is 21.7. x1 is 21.0. That gets the part of x. And then x2 is 22.0. x1 is 21.0. That's the whole of x, right? So the part of y is y3, which I don't know. Minus y1, 0 0.99690 grams per milliliter. Good to four significant digits. And then y2 is 0.99671 grams per milliliter. Good to four sig figs. Minus y1, 0 0.99690 grams per milliliter. Good to four sig figs. So we're just inserting our data in there. So when you're doing the calculation, I, you don't need to show this equation really. You can start with this, but definitely show that portion of the data table so that the person who's looking at your information or grading it uh, can kind of eyeball and make sure that it's uh, between 0.9969 and 0.99671. And if it's not, I can kind of find why. So please show the steps very clearly. So if there is a mistake, um, I or whoever's reading your paper can find that mistake within a few seconds and go, boop, you forgot a negative side, boop, forgot a zero, oop, you got Y3 and Y1 backwards or something, or you put Y2 twice. There's always something weird, right? Well, let's take a look at this. I want to isolate y3, so i got to get rid of the denominator. But before I can do that, I've got to do these subtractions. So let's do all three subtractions because they all follow the same set of uncertainty rules. When you're subtracting, you're limited by the largest absolute uncertainty, a.k.a. fewest number of decimal places. So these all have one decimal place, one decimal place, so they're going to be good to one decimal place. So 21.7 minus 21, this is where I screwed up, right, would be 0.7 degrees Celsius. 22.0 minus 21.0 would be 1.0 degrees Celsius, right? So peanut butter minus peanut butter gives you peanut butter, right? You got the right units. So that will equal, I can't do anything with the numerator, so let's just keep that y3 minus 0 0.99690 grams per milliliter. But I can do this subtraction. You can probably do that in your head. Don't trust myself when the camera's on. I'm so nervous and shy of the camera. I'm sweating. So 0.99671 minus 0 0.99690. So I get a negative value. The number one mistake students make, you're taking a smaller number minus a big number. They forget their negative sign. So four decimals, four decimals, I'm limited to four decimals. I get negative 0 0.00019 grams per milliliter. Good to four decimal places, my friends, right? So if you get a value that doesn't fall in between, I guarantee you probably forgot that negative sign there. Now, if you're doing different variables, 
you may not get this trend, right, where you get a negative, uh, you know, trend line uh, going down. If you plot this, you get a negative slope. If you have a positive slope, you won't have this issue. So just be careful that you don't forget the negatives. All right, now that we did all the subtractions, let's do all the multiplications, divisions, because they all follow the same set of rules, limited by fewest significant digits. So I'm going to isolate the numerator here. All right, so I'm trying to get to Y3. So I need to take the 0.7 degrees Celsius divided by the 1.0. Can you see the degrees Celsius cancel out? Right, I want to see that. So we're going to take 0.7 divided by 1.0 times negative 0 0.000190. I'm going to incorporate that up. So I'm going to do all of that. So 0.7 divided by 1 times that, because I'm times multiplying by the denominator to get rid of it. So let's do that pretty quick. Let's bring that down. I got two significant digits in the 1.0. I got one significant digit in the 0 0.7 and one significant digit there. So I get one significant digit overall. I don't know the answer. I haven't done this. So that cat error is still there. Ah, boogers. 0.7 divided by 1.0. I do that in my head. Times negative 0 0.000190. Double check my math, my friends. Let's do this in darker purple. Yeah. Yeah, get that to my cat. Hi, BG. So I get negative 0 0.0001. There's my first significant digit. So I'm going to put a vertical dash line there. And I get two threes after it. And that'll be grams per milliliter, right? Because the degree Celsius canceled out. I'm pulling up the grams per milliliter. So that will equal Y3 minus 0.9969 zero grams per milliliter. Hey, now I can isolate Y3. So I did all the subtractions first in step one, all the multiplications, divisions in step two. Now my last step, I'm going to add, because I got to get rid of, I got to isolate Y3. So I'm going to add 0 0.99690 to both sides. So let's move that over. Where, oh, I put, I could put this with my kitty. Let's do this last step. So many choices of colors. So Y3, I'm going to add these together. So I'm limited by a largest absolute uncertainty or fewest decimals. So I got four decimal places there. Four decimal places there. Looks like I'm good to four decimal places, right? So let's take 0 0.99690 because I'm going to add that to the other side. Uh, and I'm going to add the negative of that. So I'm going to subtract 0 0.000133. I get to four decimal places, 0.9967, vertical dash line, 67 grams per milliliter. Now, what did we estimate when we did it? Well, remember, 21.5 is halfway, which is around 0.9968. Not quite, but pretty close. So this is closer to the lower number, so it's going to be less than 0.9968. I think I guessed 0.99677 was my guess. Pretty good guess out to the 10,000th place. <laughs> Take that one. How do you like them apples? And so if we round this, that's going to round up to 0.9968 grams per milliliter. Now, if we're going to be doing, we're probably going to be using this to convert a mass to a volume or something like that. So we would use the non-rounded value anyway. We would never use the rounded value. But if we were rounding it, that would round up to a 9968. That's how you do linear interpolation anytime, any day, anywhere. It's lunchtime, gang. Yay, we earned it. Let's do it.